Hi students, in the previous session we have seen about the characteristics of unit cells. In this session we are going to see about the crystal growth techniques such as Zagrowski, Bridgman and zone melting method. First we will see the introduction to crystal growth techniques. Growing single crystal is a challenging task and the growth method depends upon the characteristics of chosen materials such as its melting point, volatile nature, solubility in water or other organic solvents etc. Bulk single crystals of materials were used in various fields such as optics, electronics, magnetics and optoelectronics devices. These bulk single crystals exhibit superior properties compared to that of polycrystalline and amorphous materials. Now we are going to see about the method of crystal growth. Crystal growth ranging from a small inexpensive techniques to a highly sophisticated expensive techniques and the crystallization time ranging from a minutes to a month. The crystal growth can be classified into three types based on their phase transformations namely growth from solid, growth from liquid, growth from vapor. Now we are going to see about the growth from solutions or growth from liquid. The growth from solution can be further classified into six types melt growth, high temperature solution growth, low temperature solution growth, hydrothermal, gel, electrocrystallizations. Melt growth is a process of crystallization of fusion and resolidifications of pure materials. All materials can be grown into a pure single crystals from the melt, providing they melt concurrently without decompositions at each melting point. In this melt growth techniques, there is no possibility of impurities enters into the growth atmospheres, except the contaminations of the crucible and the surrounding atmospheres. This melt growth techniques can be further classified into following techniques. Zakrowski techniques, Bridgman techniques, Vernier techniques and zone melting techniques. Now we are going to see about the Zakrowski growth techniques. This Zakrowski growth techniques is widely used for growing semiconductor materials like silicon, germanium, gallium, arsenic. These silicon grown crystals are cutted into vapor which are required for the IC fabrications in the electronic industries. These grown crystals are constrained by their shape due to their shape of the crucible. This Zagrowski crystal growth methods requires furnace, controlling atmosphere, pulling systems and monitoring systems. Now we are going to see about the growth procedure for Zagrowski method. Initially, the polycrystalline materials are melted in a crucible and maintained at a temperature slightly above the melting point. Then the pulling rod with the seed crystals is lowered and touches the melt. Then at the interfaces of the seed crystals and the melt, the growth is initiated. Then the seed rod is dipped in the solutions can be pulled out from the melt at a rate of 1 mm per hour. Then this melt and seed rods are rotated in a counterclockwise to maintain a uniformity of temperatures and the melt. Now we are going to see about the schematic diagram of the grown crystals which is shown in this diagram. Initially the narrow neck region is formed to prevent the thermal socking and dislocations of the grown crystals. Then the melt temperature is decreases to increase the diameter of the grown crystals. When the crystals attain full diameter the growth is maintained until the desired length of the grown crystals has been grown. The finally, the growth is terminated by forming a end cone which will prevent the thermal socking of the grown crystals. The various parts of the crystals are shown in this schematic diagram. Next, we are going to see about the Zagrowski grown silicon crystals. The first figure explains the various steps involved in the growing of silicon crystals by Zagrowski method. Initially, high purity polycrystalline materials were taken in a quartz crucible and are melted at a temperature of 1400 degrees Celsius. After the complete melt, the seed crystals was dipped into the solutions and at the interfaces of the seed crystals and the melt solutions, the growth is initiated. The grown crystal was pulled out from this melt solutions by pulling method. Then these crystals are cutted into wafers which are used for the various applications. Now we see the applications of Zagrowski method. The silicon crystal grown by this Zagrowski method are cutted and sliced into wafers which are used in the for the fabrications of ICs in the electronic industries. The silicon crystals grown by this Zagrowski method are also used to fabricate the solar cells in the photovoltaic industries which will produce a high efficient. Advantages of Zagrowski methods are, this method can produce a large diameter single crystals. 
there is no direct contact between the crucible wall and the grown crystals which will produce as a unstressed pure single crystals. Disadvantages of Zakalski methods are this method is not suitable for the inconcurrent melting compound. The need of seed crystals limits its application for the growth of single crystals. Next we are going to see about the Bridgman method. The Bridgman method is the one of the oldest method for the growth of single crystal from the melt. Similar to the Jakarovsky method, the Bridgman method is the user to grow a single crystal from the melt solutions. In this method, the container or the crucible containing the molten materials are translated along the temperature gradients and leads to the solidifications of the material into single crystals. In this method, the requirement of the growth process are furnace which may be vertical or horizontal, container or crucible, pulling system, then controlling and monitoring system. Now we see the vertical Bridgman method. The Bridgman method is the direct solidifications of the material by translating the melt from hot junction to cold junction of the furnace. The furnace works with three temperature regions. The upper region with the temperature above the melting point which is called as hot zone and the lower region which is maintained with the below the temperature of the melting point which is called as cold zone. And in between these two zones, a adiabatic zone is formed, which is shown in this diagram. Initially, the polycrystalline materials are taken in the crucibles are need to melted completely in the hot zone regions and brought into contact with the seed crystals at the bottom of the container in the cold zone regions. Now, the part of the seed crystals was remelted after the contact with the melt, which will provide a fresh interface for the crystal growth. The crucible is slowly translated into the cold region of the furnace. The temperature of the bottom of the crucible falls below the solidification temperature and the crystal growth is initiated by the seed crystals at the interface. When the entire crucible is translated into the cold zone, the complete melt is converted into the single crystals. The entire growth process was shown in this figure. Now we see the schematic diagram of the furnace with the temperature profile. The first figure explains the vertical Bridgman method. In this method, the top region is the hot zone region and the bottom region is the cold zone region. In between there is a adiabatic region is formed where the crystal growth occurs. The next figure explains the horizontal Bridgman method. The left side of the furnace is the cold zone region and the right side of the furnace is the hot zone region. In between there is a adiabatic region is formed where the crystal growth take place. And the temperature profile of the furnaces are shown in this figure. Now we see the advantages of Bridgman method. This method is technically simple. It has low cost methods. It will produce a large diameter single crystals. Disadvantages of Bridgman methods. Need of seed crystals limits its applications. Stress is developed on the ground crystals due to the contact with the container wall. Next we are going to see about the floating zone method. In this method a liquid zone is created by melting a small amount of portions of the feed rod. Then the liquid is maintained in between the feed rod and the seed crystals. The liquid zone is moved upwards and the ground crystal is obtained at the bottom. The various heating source used for this floating zone methods are induction coil heating, resistive heating and the optical lamp with mirror focusing systems are used. Now we are going to see about the optical floating zone method. In this method a high power lamp with mirror focusing system is used to create the liquid zone for the crystal growth. Initially a high quality polycrystalline materials were made into seed rod and it is hooked in the upper soft and the seed rod is fixed in the lower soft of the furnace. A small portion of the seed rod is melted using this lamp and mirror focusing system and the seed rod is allowed to touch it. Then the interface is created for the crystal growth and the ground crystal is pulled downward in the furnace. Both the feed rod and the seed rod are rotated in a counterclockwise directions to maintain the shape of the solid liquid interfaces. The first figure explains the schematic diagram of the growth process in the optical floating zone furnace where the feed rod is fixed at the upper soft and the seed crystal is fixed at the lower soft. Two lamp with the elliptical mirror focusing system is used to create the liquid zone for the crystal growth. The second and third image explains the complete diagram of the optical floating zone furnace. Now we are going to see about the advantages of optical floating zone method. It is a crucible free technique for the growth of single crystals. High quality and high purity single crystals can be grown by this method. 
disadvantages of optical floating zone method. It is a high cost technique for the growth of single crystals. Large diameter crystals cannot be able to grow by this method. It is required uniform cylindrical with crack free polycrystalline feed rod for the crystal growth. Let us come to the end of the sessions. I hope you all understood about the various crystal growth techniques such as Zakalski, Bridgman and optical floating zone methods. In the upcoming sessions, we are going to see in detail about the crystal defects and imperfections. Thank you.